Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name's David. Have you ever been to a restaurant, sat down to eat, and a magician walked over and started performing magic at your table? How do you get that job? How do you become a magician who works at a restaurant? That sounds like a great magic question. All right, restaurant magic. How do you become a magician that works at a restaurant? Now, uh, a while back, I already posted a video about getting gigs, right? Getting gigs. And I'm sure a lot of the information that's in that video is applicable here. But when I recorded that video, I kind of stressed heavily um, wedding magic, right? Working with weddings because I actually have experience working in the wedding industry. However, I have never performed magic in a restaurant, so I don't have experience in that area, but it didn't stop you guys from asking the question. <laughs> so here's what I did. On top of doing the research to, to answer the question for you, I also found a friend of mine who has restaurant experience, who's worked in a restaurant that's had a magician. So I was able to interview her and then do some research myself to make this video. But I wanna say, if you are serious, all right, if you are serious and this is actually what you want to do, you wanna be a magician who works at a restaurant, my advice to you is stop and seek professional help. No, seriously, stop watching this, stop watching this video and go and invest in yourself. You need to purchase live at the jailhouse, a guide to restaurant magic. It's a three DVD set from Paul Green. You're gonna get all the information you need plus tricks. All the information you need plus tricks, it's $80. Invest in yourself. If this is, if this is something you are serious about, don't watch free videos on YouTube, okay? Invest in yourself spend the 80 bucks, get professional help, all right? That's my, that's my advice to you. You can stop watching this now and go and enjoy life. <laughs> I'll, just save you, I'll just save you some time, okay? <laughs> go, go listen to somebody who actually knows what they're talking about, all right? But if you are sticking around and uh, you, want some, you want some free advice, <laughs> here's my free advice. Uh, number one, you gotta get a job, right? You gotta get the job. Okay, so you're gonna do it like any other job. You're gonna call the general manager of the restaurant and, uh, or, or you're gonna call whoever's in charge of hiring, right? You're gonna call up and say, hey, can I talk to who's in charge of hiring? If they say, oh, that's so-and-so and they're here Tuesdays, then call back on Tuesdays. Don't leave your name and number. They don't wanna call you back, all right? Or, or go to the restaurant when you know they're actually gonna be there. Make an appointment, let them know you're coming. And then you're gonna come in right? And you're going to audition. You're going to come ready as if you were going to perform that, that same day, okay? Don't come in with jeans and a t-shirt and kind of like, oh, that. you are applying for a job. You want to impress them. You're going to come in character, okay? More than likely, they've never hired a magician before and they've probably never even thought about it. So you have to sell yourself and convince them that hiring a magician is gonna enhance their business and it's going to entertain people while they wait. You're either gonna be table side right after they've ordered and they're waiting for their food to come. You're gonna to go to the bar while people are just sitting there. You might even go over to the waiting area and entertain people while they're waiting to be seated. You wanna explain all this to the manager as if they don't know, right? Because you're, you're, you're trying to let them know that you're gonna enhance the dining experience. All right, so you have to sell that and you have to be prepared to talk about that. And you're gonna show them something, right? You're gonna show them a quick trick, a quick trick. Don't do this long, drawn out, multi-stage thing. You wanna hit them, impress them, even if this isn't something that you would actually perform at a restaurant, you know? And that's maybe what I would suggest. Bring something that's gonna wow them, hit them really big, leave them shock and awe, right? It doesn't have to be the kind of trick that you would do at a restaurant, but you want to impress upon them that you're the real deal. And then, um, if they're kind of like, oh, I don't, know, I don't know, I don't know, I'll think about it, then do this. Offer that you'll come 
let them pick the night, let them pick the night, you'll come and do three hours, right? You say, I'll come and work for you for three hours for free, okay? And just come and walk around and let them see what you bring, right? Let them see you in action before they invest, okay? You may need to call several restaurants before you get a bite, okay? Don't expect that you're just gonna walk into one restaurant, they're gonna fall in love with you. Uh, don't give up, okay? You are gonna have, might have to call a couple restaurants to, to land a job. So um, let me give you some tips. Now these are from uh, my friend who worked at a restaurant that had a magician and uh, she knew what she was talking about. And so I would, and, and from what I've seen uh, from other people and what they've said, I think the information kind of jives. So uh, if you have never worked in a restaurant before, and I haven't, I've never worked in a restaurant. I worked retail, but never worked a restaurant. It's a completely different fish, okay? Working in a restaurant is unique in and of itself. They have a way of moving, they have a flow, they have lingo, all of that you need to pick up on. So whether you're there at the restaurant off hours or uh, you're on the clock, pay attention to what is going on not just, don't just be in your own little world. Watch the flow of the, of the, the waiters and waitresses and listen to the words that they use and start using those words. My advice on your very first night, your very first night, learn the table numbers because you might be performing for someone or um, you might say, hey, can I do some tricks for you? And they might say no, but can you tell our waitress we need water? What are you gonna say in that moment? You're gonna say, oh, well, I don't, I don't work here. Wrong, <laughs> you can't say that. You do work there, okay? You might be the magician or the entertainment, but you can't, you represent the restaurant, okay? And you have to still be kind and courteous as if, as if you were one of the wait staff. So you need to be able to walk up to a, to a waitress and say, hey, table three needs water. Table four needs to speak to you, right? Instead of saying, oh, that, rest, that table over there, the guy with the tie and the striped shirt, no, the other one, or the waitresses themselves. They might walk up to you and say, hey, I was just talking to table seven and they would like you to come by. You should know where table seven is, okay? Learn the layout. So I've mentioned being courteous and helpful with the staff. I've mentioned um, your interaction with the customers is also huge. You represent the restaurant. Don't ever say, that's not my job. Don't ever say like, well, I don't really work here. None of that. You, 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 you represent the restaurant. Um, I would lastly say you wanna be likable. Have a character. You are not the magician, okay? You have to have a character that is you, that you are selling. Not just to the restaurant, but to the customer too. When you walk up, you, you need to have something that you're gonna say, be likable, be presentable. You, you have to be almost entertaining before the first trick even starts. The spectators have to want to see you, right? So be likable, have a character. Think about that approach first and then your tricks. You're gonna sell yourself and, and your character first, your tricks come second. Second tip, you want short tricks that are easy to follow, okay? Your set has to be very modular. It can't rely on Oh, this trick follows this trick, and this trick tie is a this trick is a throwback to the first trick. You can't think like that. You gotta think in little small modular sets because at any moment the waitress could come back. And when the waitress comes back or the waiter comes back, they don't want to wait for you. You are in their way. Okay? You are here to entertain the customer, but the most important thing is the dining experience. Not you. All right? So if they're standing there with their tray of food and you're like, hang on a minute, I'm almost at the big finish of my ambitious card. They're gonna hate you, <laughs> okay? When the food comes, you're done. You are done. Get up, walk out. I mean, well, go to the next table, obviously. So make your tricks small, contained, and short, okay? No long, drawn-out scenarios that are multi-phased things where stuff's coming out of pockets and flying through the air. And think about your table space. You ever been to a restaurant 
there's not a lot of table space, right? There's a candle, there's salt and pepper, there's sugar packets, there's ketchup, there's plates, there's you know setups, there's menus, there's stuff everywhere. So if you think you're gonna roll up and spread your mat out and have all this retail space, you're crazy, okay? So uh, think about your own pockets and how you're gonna carry items. You need to pack light and you need to make more magic with less items and you need to think very carefully about the limited table space you have. Of course, you can reach across the table and have somebody select a card. They can sign it and put it back. But that kind of space, that's not really requiring anything to be put down on the table. So you got to think about table space as well. All right, let's talk about tricks. What type of tricks, right? Everybody wants to know, oh, what type of tricks, what type of tricks? Um, I'm going to say, let's, let's shoot for five to seven tricks. Not, not that you would do five to seven tricks for a table, okay? But you've got five to seven tricks on your person. All right, that's it. That's all you need. Because you're probably only gonna do a handful at any table, maybe three at the most, okay? Not, not very many. Um, like I said, you wanna think about pocket management. You wanna think about do, learning to do more with less. You don't have a lot of table space. So yeah, I don't, 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 don't load yourself up for bear with like a bandolier full of magic tricks or a fanny pack full of magic tricks. You, you don't need that much. Uh, second, I wouldn't start with a card trick, okay? Card tricks, they don't have a lot of like oof pow, like people maybe expect that. I would wanna start with something that grabs their attention immediately, something big, something over the top, something like what? Um, and card tricks sometimes, like I said, they, they tend to need a table or whatever. Uh, so I wouldn't start with something that establishes yourself as the guy or the gal, right? This is, this is me, right? Something, something that screams, this, unless card tricks are all you do, obviously. Um, but if you do do cards, I would think about tricks like Red Hot Mama, Invisible Deck, anything that involves tearing cards, anything that involves burning cards, anything that involves riding on cards. I think all of those things are either interesting, visually interesting, exciting, or involve the spectator. You want to involve the spectator as much as possible in your tricks. Um, coin or a borrowed ring to nest of wallet, that would be a good one, right? Because you're borrowing an item, something that's personal to them, and then something magic is happening with that ring. Two that are classic that work in this setting, mismade bill, right? Because how easy is it to borrow a bill? Do mismade bill. Crazy man's handcuffs, I know that sounds so weird. You're like, really? But yes, it's perfect for that kind of intimate setting. And it's hard to explain, it's easy to carry. And it, 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 the rubber band tricks are great for restaurant magic. And cups and balls or chop cup, especially if you can use what's lying on the table. You know, if you can do a, chop, a, a cups and balls trick with the things that are there on the table, that kind of now incorporates, you know, the, the restaurant, so that's good too. Have magic for kids. Don't just think about magic for adults, all right? Think about the fact that there's gonna be kids there. Sponge balls and sponge rabbits plays great with everyone and it can get everyone at the table involved. If you walk up and you see a table with kids, I know as a parent, I would much rather have the magician focus on my children and entertaining them than ignoring them and entertaining me. I would rather see my children uh, off their phones and being engaged with another human <laughs> and, and, and having an experience. I would rather have my children have the experience than me. So think about doing stuff for kids for sure. If you need more ideas about performing magic or what types of tricks you could do, um, I would look at tricks from Carl Andrews. He's got a lot of great things that I think work, work really well in that environment. Um, Let's, let's talk about your approach for just a second, all right? So you're gonna walk up to a table, okay? And you're gonna say something like, um, hey, I'm so-and-so, and the restaurant's asked me to do a magic trick, or I'm a strolling magician, or I'm just walking around entertaining folks. You mind if I do something for you really quick? Really quick, right, really quick. So they know they're agreeing to something, and it's not gonna be a huge investment, right? You do something, you shock and awe them, and then you'd say, all right, hey, I hope you guys have a great time. Enjoy your meal. If you wanna see more magic, just once again, my name's Steve, my name's David, my name's Paula, whatever, and just, hey, grab your waiter and let them know you'd like to see more tricks. 
and see what happens. They might say, all right. And so that's your cue. Like you did one trick and you're gone, right? They want to get back to their conversation. That's fine, right? Or they stop you right at that moment and go, wait, 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 do you have to go? We'd love to see more. And then bam, you're in, okay? Kind of want to hit them and run and see if uh, they want to see more, okay? Because they might, if you just launch into this long routine, they might feel like, oh, I kind of would like to get back to our romantic dinner, but you know, you're, you're here and I don't, I don't know, I don't feel comfortable telling you to leave, right? So just give them the, give them the out, right? Just ask them, is it okay if I do something? Do something and then kind of pretend like you're gonna walk off and see if they ask for an encore. If they do, you're a welcome guest and you can keep on going. Let's talk about books, let's talk about material, let's talk about where else you could go. I already mentioned uh, one that I think is crucial and that's that's the one I would say you, you want. The rest of these that I'm gonna suggest to you, they're a little older, a little dated, and they might be um, a little bit more difficult to find, but I wanna make, I wanna make sure I mention them. Uh, the first one is The Magic Menu, years one through five. This is a $40 uh, compilation. It was put together by Jim Sisti. I think it's in his third printing now. And it really contains everything you need to know about doing walk around magic in a real world environment. And so this is a great compilation. Uh, the second is The Complete Guide to Restaurant and Walk Around Magic by Kirk Charles. It is from the 80s. It is a little dated. Um, so it might be, like I said, harder to find. There's also The Definitive Guide to Restaurant Magic by Wayne Goodman. It's $23. And there's The Restaurant Worker's Handbook by Jim Pace and Jerry McGregor. It's $24, it's 154 pages. Um, another recommendation I would have, just one more before we go, and um, this would be another kind of all-in-one, right? Another kind of all-in-one because uh, Doc Eason's Bar Magic DVDs, okay? There's three of them. You can get all three for a hundred bucks. This is another great one because it's gonna be everything you need. He's gonna give you all the tips and tricks at the beginning. And what I, I mean by that, by like getting the job, presenting yourself, how to dress, do all that. And then it's full of magic, full of magic. And Doc Eason's performing the magic in a bar in the exact same setting you're gonna be in. So you're gonna see, you know, limited space, limited props, doing a lot of magic with very little, you know, props. A hundred bucks for this or $80 for Live at the Jailhouse is nothing, nothing. If it, if it gets, you go, gets you going and puts you off on the right foot, I think if you're serious about this, you need to invest in yourself because this is, this is gonna be your business, all right? This is gonna be how you make money. And so you have to spend money to make money, okay? There's a reason why people say that, because it's true, okay? You are worth it, your career is worth it. Invest in yourself, okay? Get, get material and get advice from the experts, okay? Not, not free info from YouTube, all right? All right, well, that's everything I can say. That's everything I had. I hope that at least eases you in the right direction, uh, gives you some advice, or at least lets you know where you can look. And of course, now this is the best time. This is the best part of the video because you get to comment. Now we get to hear from you. You are watching this and maybe you have some advice. You do have experience working in restaurants or you do have ideas or tips or, or, or tricks that can help. Put your nice, friendly, courteous comment down below so that other people can read it and draw wealth and inspiration and advice from you, that would be very helpful. Thanks for watching guys, thanks for hanging out with me, and thanks for your magic questions. I try to answer them all. I'll see you guys next time, bye.